play across. But to be honest, it's driven me mad. Too many little buggers feeding. But so what I'm going to do, I'm going to drop on my middle line that I've been feeding. I've just been loose feeding it for probably, I reckon I've been feeding it 40 minutes with not a lot. And it's a very typical thing that I think you need to do is to not feed it from the start. Feeding it from the start is the worst thing that I possibly can see happen because you introduce far too much bait into a peg without understanding what's going on with how much bait's there, whether there's fish present eating it, and you have no idea of the build-up that's going on uh, if that bait isn't getting eaten. So by feeding it sort of half hour, maybe, yeah, so we've gone 40 minutes day, half hour to 20 minutes in a normal match situation before they decide to go on it, um, there's less chance of me knackering it by putting a load of bait in and that's sitting on the bottom if there's no fish there. So what I've been doing today is just feeding a little tiny pinch. I mean, five or six maggots, just every now and again, just to give them a little taste in the roundabout area that I'm going to feed. So because I'm fishing nice and short, I'm fishing, what, six metres? I can comfortably feed my bait nice and relatively accurately there to get plenty of fish in the area before I go on it. So, with the feeding done and hopefully a few fish in place, oh, there's actually, there's a couple here, I just had a sneaky, sneaky exploratory cast on it and caught Charlie the Chub. Um, I want to talk about rigs. So my rigs are a little bit differently on this. In the across, I'm all about the slow fall. It has to be a slow fall so fish can see that bait coming down and intercept me bait because that's how they want to feed over there. And they're not feeding in massive numbers on that far bank either when it comes down to F1 fishing. And it, it's more grabbing their attention with that bait, constantly going through and, and just picking off single fish with, with maggots, nearly dobbing to be honest when it gets really, really hard. Down the middle, however, is where they come to have a feed. And typically that last hour when just when the light's starting to go, like it is in today's case, that's when they're most likely to come down, have a chew. And for me, for F1s on a snake lake, the middle is where they come to feed late on at nearly every possible venue I can think of. So I've got my fish there ready. What I want to do, because I've got a nice flat bottom, I don't want to worry too much about catching fish through the water. I mean, it's something I've played with quite a lot um, in having really strung out gaily rigs with almost no shot down the bottom end whatsoever. Um, and I, I do believe that has a place. I believe it's important to fish in that way when you're after two or three bites, when it really is rock bottom and it just grabs you the attention of those couple of fish, even on this line, when it's, it's really hard. But in most cases, when you want it to be decent, you want to catch a few fish. I find these days a bulk of droppers is by far a better form of presentation to get my rig down to where the fish are, but still get myself a nice little fall in the bottom end. So in today's case, I've got a, a 414 rig on. A bulk of number nines here, I've got a bulk of one, two, three, four, five number nines, number 10 underneath them, and I've got two number 10 droppers. So it's going to sink really fast with the bulk, but that last little bit's going to come in nice. So it still gives me a bit of a nice fall at the bottom end, just so them crafty F1s can watch me bait coming down uh, and hopefully stack the odds in my favour of getting a bite or two. Um, again, I've gone with my nice positive type floats. I've gone with my uh, hollow bristle version of my carbon floats, just because uh, I want to be able to see it and there's plenty of fish feeding. I've not got to go really, really girly yet. And again, I've got a little bit bigger this time on my hook size. So then my last one's me, me 16 Gamma Blacks, which are really, really light. They help me bait sink a bit slower. When I come short, I'm much more likely to fish double maggots or bigger baits. So I've gone in that case, I think I've got a Guru 18 uh, Guru Pellet on there, which are actually me, me dobbing hooks and me bagging maggot hooks that I put on when, when I'm going to catch a lot of fish, or I'm hoping to catch a lot of fish on maggots. And in today's case, so we're going to be fishing uh, double maggots on that. I'll tell you what I want to talk about quickly though, in just as a, on a bit of a tangent, with winter F1 fishing being the focus, um, I want to talk about elastics and lines. In a, a, not a mistake I see, but people seem quite confused sometimes about uh, matching the two together. And a mistake I see, people fishing too heavy elastic wise for the lines that they need to be using at this time of year. Like I'm a big fan in today's, every uh, line in today's case, we've had an 010 hook length which is about right for this time of year. I want to catch plenty of fish um, and get them in quick. When it gets colder, however, I have got no problem whatsoever in dropping to an 08 hook length because I would guarantee 100% it does get you more bites. Without a doubt, it's one of my biggest edges that I've had since I started commercial fishing. It's fishing lighter than everyone else. It does, for F1s, get you more bites without a doubt. But what you have to ensure when you're doing it is that it's balanced to your elastic. It's not about having anything balanced to your main line. Your main line is nigh on irrelevant. So in most cases, I'm fishing an 015, 016, 017 main line. So it's nice and durable, stays straight more importantly, but it's my hook length and elastic that needs to be matched together. Also need to consider the hook as well. I want a nice light hook, but when you're fishing this light, your hook's never gonna be uh, overpowered by your elastics anyway. But for fishing, um, when it gets really hard and you're dropping down to your lighter elastics, you're sort of 
four to six grades of whatever your personal choice of elastic is, then that's the time that you need to be dropping down to your 08 and your 010s, using an elastic that is all right for that sort of, um, that strength of hook length, that diameter of hook length as well. So definitely don't be, um, don't be weary or don't be, um, use the wrong sort of elastics. Don't go too heavy because all you're going to do is start blowing your hook lengths up by trying to land your fish too quick. I'd much rather get the bites in the first place and land them by fishing a bit softer than not get the bites in the first place and end up snapping me hook length if I do fish too heavy elastics. So, onto some fishing. And for this one, it's all about keeping the fish where I want them on the bottom. So if I wanted to be really, really, really keen at this line, I'd set this rig up with a bulk and droppers and I'd also set the same sort of rig up as I've set for the far bank. Just a 414s with spread shot all the way through. But if, I, if I'm completely honest, doing that rig down the middle, your, your slow falling rig, I tend to find these days it, it just causes me a lot of problems in wasted time and, and efficiency in that you can end up striking at a lot of indications because there's still plenty of fish there. But because of the time your rig takes to settle, I mean, a strung out 4B14s rig can take, it's pushing 10 seconds for it to settle. And if I'm missing an indication every 30 seconds, then the last thing I want to be doing is laying that rig in another 10 seconds, another 10 seconds. It's a lot of time wasted if I'm not getting proper bites. So instead, I'd rather alter my feed in once the fish are present and get them to feed on the bottom if I can do so. And that way I can catch them a lot more efficiently with a nice positive rig that takes two or three seconds to get down there and saves me a lot of time at the end of the day. So I'm going to get some pots on and we're going to have a little go on that line and see if there's any more fish there. Right, so I want to have a little fish. So I've just fed that, I fed that 15 seconds ago. So hopefully that's going to give me bait time to get to the bottom by the time I've messed about, putting my hook bait on, talking to you lot, and then getting back out there. So what I'm going to go with on this one, I've gone with double maggot hook bait, just so it stands out a bit. I mean, I feel like I've fed quite a bit of bait on that line already, so I just want a bit of a standout hook bait. And by judging with what's happening across, there's a lot of little silver fish feeding. Um, so hopefully it'll avoid them a little bit. Less chance of catching Gary the Gudgeon. So I've actually hooked my maggots as well. Uh, through the pointy end, this is what I generally do with uh, double baits, just so there's less chance of the maggots turning over and it leaves more of a, an empty hook, if you like, more of a bare hook, because I'm only hooking them in the tiny pointy end instead of uh, the, the fat back end of them. So that didn't take long. So it's straight in over the top of that bait. I say the second that's landed, something's had a go of it. Is he another, another lovely chubbly or is he an ID ID? He's an ID ID. So getting a bite that quick is a massive indicator that there's going to be plenty, or hopefully, I'd imagine, oh, he's come out real good, that there's going to be a lot of fish present in the peg. I mean, there's got to be. I've fed 100 maggots on it. So for, for me to get a bite that quick, there must be a very good chance that most of that bait's going to have gone. But still, I'm not going to feed again, just so I want an understanding of what's happening. So if people get too much into the habit of throwing the bait in, shipping out, or cupping the bait in and shipping out. So it's the wrong thing to do. You need to understand what's happening in your peg, what impact your initial feeds had, or initial regular feeds have had on the peg, before you make any uh, assumptions and put additional bait into the peg, which could potentially reduce the odds of you getting bites. So I'm going to go straight back in there without feeding, and immediately again I've had a, an indication. So there are clearly loads of fish present. But because there's so many, I need to make sure I feed. And the elastic's a little bit droopy there. I need to feed at the right time. Yeah, if I feed on top of those fish now with, with maggots, exactly the same things I was talking about across, they're going to come off the bottom immediately. That was a bigger fish then as well. That was a proper one. I'm just going to check that that bait's all right. He's nicked one of my maggots. Yeah, so feeding would definitely be uh, the wrong thing to do, despite it being good with lots of fish there. So instead, what I'm going to do, because of course I need to feed to, to keep them happy, to keep a few in the peg, because with me getting bites so quickly, there's definitely not a lot of maggots left on the bottom. So instead, I'm going to feed at a time that gives me maximum opportunity, you know, there's loads feeding in the peg, for that bait to get to the bottom before I get over there. So I'm going to feed now that I've hooked a fish. And that's going to give me the maximum amount of time to, for me to mess about landing this fish, get it in, ship back out, and that way, hopefully, another idea, there's so many eyes in here, um, of those maggots will have hit the bottom and reduce the liners that I'm going to get. 
I say, I can guarantee that feeding over the top of my float is just going to result in me being less efficient because I'm going to start missing more and more and more bites because those fish, especially I, there's, there's nothing worse than I or, or little F ones maybe, but coming up as quickly as they can possibly can when the feed goes in. Well, hopefully feeding in the way I just have should lead to still a nice positive bite. So on that nice positive rig that's took only a few seconds to settle. Hopefully, see, I've, I've suffered no liners all the way down. It's straight down and fishing. And with a bit of luck, I'll get a proper bite. And I won't be laying in that rig all the time through missing false indications that are caused by incorrect timing of feed. That all said, I had a little weird liner then, but here we go. Same again at the minute as well. I'm going to feed every other cast. I'm not going to feed every cast until I, I know exactly what's happening. Andy would love it here, Rich, wouldn't he, catching these? But so what it's all about now is ringing a change. You see if these are the, the right fish I need to be catching, depending on what's going on around me. And if not, and if I feel there's enough fish in the peg to force it, what I'm going to do next is put a pot on. But I'm going to put quite a big pot on. I'm going to put a, a medium-sized open top pot on. I'm going to introduce a lot more bait on a more of an accurate scale right on top of where I want to be. Just because there's so many of these fish feeding, I need to, to nearly get rid of these if I'm planning on catching any bigger fish. They're proper ones, then, mate, aren't they? I don't actually mind catching them, but we're not here to do that. So... If these are either let me, I'm going to put a decent pot on. And a little trick to keep my maggots in my pot and to get them to leave it a lot better is by filling my pot full of water. I can put my pile of maggots in there. I'm going to feed quite a few. I'm going to feed a good 50, maybe 60 maggots. Just tip that water off. And what that does, it keeps them in my pot brilliantly. It actually helps them like a bit of a vacuum create and they suck into my pot, which helps me be able to ship out a little bit quicker, a little bit easier without dropping them all over the place. And as well, when I actually put them in, which I'm gonna do now, let me go that way so you can see on camera, they fall out in a lovely little clump and stay a little bit more accurately than they would if I were to feed them um, feed them loose. So I'm hoping to get a bite on them before it reaches the bottom. So that'll be just from the, the feeds before that that I've caught this one, and hopefully it'll go in. And next time I go in, hopefully I'll be able to tighten these fish up a little bit maybe get a bite a bit quicker, and more importantly, maybe to start catching some proper fish over the top of it. But time will tell. See, so that, just feeding that in that one way, that big pot, it's crazy, just changing my peg almost instantly. You know, is that a bigger fish as well? Yeah, different fish as well. And it just stops those eyes that are responding to the, the noise of rattling on the surface all the time just calms them down a little bit and just allows me bait to get to the bottom and get to the, the fish to get to the bottom as well and leads me to catch a proper fish. It's amazing that the little differences it can make to your peg just the way you're instituting your bait is unbelievable. So I can just simply judge between the two now which is best, which is the most efficient, uh, which is gonna lead to pretty much for me the maximum uh, weight in my net in the period of time that I'm fishing it. So it, it makes it again nice and versatile just by changing the way that I'm feeding my bait almost creates a completely new peg. So the only thing I have to keep track of now is when to keep putting that amount of maggots in. So the last thing I want to do is put a full pot of maggots in every single cup, uh, every single chuck. That's going to be far too much bait and upset my peg very, very quickly. So instead, by feeding sort of every second or every third fish, Hopefully I'll be able to keep the fish on the bottom where I want and maybe avoid those eyed, which is what I'm trying to get to. So that's straight back into an eye. So next time I'm going to feed, her, feed another pot. See if we can get them to calm down and get them F1s to have a little feed. Right, well that has taken flipping ages if I'm honest. We've been fishing this line for 20 minutes and we've caught loads of fish. It's been a bite of chuck, it's been brilliant. But it just took a long time for them 
proper official for an F1 to respond, but that's just time of year. I mean, that's just because there's still lots of silverfish fishing in a bit because of this venue as well, because they've got a lot of a lot of IDIs and chubs and tench and all sorts in here, which definitely ain't a bad thing. But we just had to get rid of them first before F1 start feeding. So by almost feeding the eye off, but having to catch them at the same time, just wading through them, eventually it's led me to catch an F1. And so from this point, now that the eye have pretty much um, ate everything that they're going to, because they seem to be a bit of a gorge feeder where they eat all the bait and then they, they swim off, or that they stop feeding rather, now it'll let me revert it to a, an F1 line where I can be a little bit more cautious I can sneak my bait in with a cup or throw it when I need to, depending on what, how often these are coming into my peg. And with a bit of luck, by making the changes that I've gone through on, on all of the rigs with you today, it'll just lead me to have a, a better run at the end. That's just a little carpy, but we're going to treat him as an F1. And he's going to behave in pretty much exactly the same way. He's a lovely little one. So he's up exactly where he should be. So hopefully, proper maggot muncher for down the middle. <laughs> 